Good morning guys, James here down in the very sunny south of France. We're in Rodriguez shipyard just outside Antibes this morning for a look around the Sunseeker Manhattan 70. Now this one I'm just taking in part exchange against a new boat we sold recently. Just doing the survey today to check her out. So we're going to have a look around in her raw state. This is pre, um, pre sort of prep for sale for us. Just to give you a flavour of what the boat is like and hopefully you can get ahead of that waiting list that's bound to uh, to emerge as soon as she goes on the open market as these are really really popular boats so she's a 2007 build very end of 2007 build 2008 model manhattan 70 very very popular model for us in the sunseeker range uh, four cabins all en suite you've got space for a couple of crew in the back as well uh, we've got mtu 1360 horsepower engines And we ran around this morning about 15 knots so we could get the drone out and take some exterior running shots. But she's just in the slings here at the boatyard whilst our surveyor checks her out underneath the stern gear platform and the general hull structure. So just having a little walk around here so you can take her in from different angles. Have two options with a boat like this, this time of the year. We can either sell her at a, a cheaper price as you see her now in her raw state or we could uh, we could fully prep the boat for the season with servicing and polishing and what have you she's been out of the water recently for anti-foul and anode so the underwater side is all pretty much up together but uh, there's still some mechanical stuff to do for the season last serviced in the, the late spring last year 2022 in Mallorca uh, boats recently relocated here to France I'll just come in you can see the anti-foul surface here a few little patches where the surveyor is just taking the anti-foul off so he can do his moisture readings also check the structure for uh, for cracking coming on the bow thruster here you can see recently replaced anodes on there gel coat's got a pretty good shine obviously Sunseeker use a pretty unique bright white gel coat which stands up really well to the, the med heat here. Uh, this is a very dark blue boot top stripe here, just running along above the waterline. You've got your exhaust boxes here, outlets, uh, generator systems, what have you. Try and take her in from this side as well. So just coming in on the platform, got big hydraulic chim tabs they've got anodes on the top there and then we've got some I think these are ocean LED underwater lights one two three four five six of those across the back there stern thruster tube on the transom itself and then have a quick look underneath here at the actual stern gear so big five blade props which all appear on first look like the cutlass bearings and seals are all good down here I see still some mechanical testing to do when we go back out and run the boat up under full load but first impressions from an underwater perspective is that she's all up together so we are back on the water we left the golf round behind which is over here lovely part the Riviera here, this is the capped on team, and we'll be heading back round to our home berth in on team in the not too distant future. Now, behind us, just come back on the camera, rocking around a bit as we've just been doing some high speed maneuvering. We've got a can behind us, and then the islands up there as well beautiful beautiful part of the world we can of course set you up with a mooring down here we've got three offices in the south of france very well connected big part of our gardenage and after sales business down here uh, so captain and the surveyor just going through systems checks and what have you at the moment we'll just give you a quick look round whilst we're heading back we'll do the full tour of all the interior when we get back into on team but 
give you a bit of a flavour of what she's like out in the open water here. I've cut some running shots in just now, we're doing some tight turns and what have you, just to make sure all of the rudders are good, no untoward vibrations. Uh, tender's not included on this one, but that's a uh, space on the back for up to a four meter Williams 395 on the back, if you wish. Uh, so they're keeping that for the new boat, but uh, we can source you one of those if required. See all the fenders up on the deck as we had to lift them in order to back out of the hoist dock. Just give you a quick flavor inside of what the saloon is like underway. So say we'll, we'll go through all this in a bit more detail once we're back in port. But lovely big hull windows here, you see that? View from the sofas. Very social these, so we obviously got an aft, aft saloon set up with a galley forward and then the dinette space in front. I've actually chartered one of these with a the family a few years back and it is a very social boat, room for four, four couples as we were on the boat and it worked really nicely. Rapid wake shot there, love, love that view for me, it's one of the best parts of owning your boat is, is seeing that when you stick the throttles down. So Amanda's just running us back up to speed here, we'll come up and you can see the view from the ridge. As we get up underway, obviously lots of super yachts in this part of the world as it is very much the playground of the rich and famous. So we've got a big sun pad here up next to the helm. Plenty of space, sort of four, four adults on there, protected by the glass screen. So it's a nice place to chill out, put some uh, freestanding cushions around the back there. That works really nicely. Uh, over here, we've got then the dining space, table expands. That's all in very nice condition. So teak twin leaves there. Uh, storage lockers, of course, underneath all the seating. The upholstery's been replaced. It's not original. A few marks and bits of wear and tear on it. I'll try and find you some. You can see over there in the corner, but I would say it's um, Silvertex platinum, platinum colour. Cushions are kept downstairs below decks for not use, so that does keep the sun damage to a minimum. Uh, over this side, we've got a little wet bar with a sink see an ice maker in here and then a top loading cool box and a griddle. Uh, it's worth noting on this I would suggest whilst it does function for now it won't be too long until this teak deck is going to need replacing. If it was me I'd probably be considering changing this to a synthetic deck but it's getting to that point now as original wood that it is getting uh, very thin in places. You can see the caulking going out of the planks here and there's some, it's down to the plywood and some of the bits at the back end. So that would be something I'd budget for perhaps in the next season when some maintenance works. Uh, behind the seating, we've got a couple of just freestanding sun lounges here. That's quite typical on something like this. And then we've had some updates on the stereo from original. So there's some larger fusion speakers there. Um, up top, we've got a KVH system. So that's Although a little outdated these days, most people running with a 4G router on board, it does give you a satellite system. And then you've got the open array scanner there, running a Raymarine nav system. And then we've got things like the GPS aerials, there's a radar reflector, TV antenna, and a couple of VHF aerials up on the arch. Dome's obviously been painted black just to give a slightly more moody look to the boat. Uh, Bimini frame was replaced, or sorry, I should say the canvas was replaced on there. I think it was last season, so that's all looking pretty good. Climb up and have a look on the top side of that. Nice deep black colour on the canvas. So on the dash itself, we've got the E120 12-inch multifunction display. That'll do your chart and radar. Engine gauges up top, reading. 1,372 hours on there will creep up slightly as we're running around still. And then we have the engine displays here, the man bonding displays, depth display, a 240E, a DSC VHF over there, and then autopilot, remote control for spotlight. 
an engine start stops and what have you. Over on that side of the wheel, we've got a tilt wheel. Obviously there's the throttle and the tab controls and the thruster controls that we saw earlier when the boat was lifted out. Just stand up here and have a look onto the bow itself. Obviously got a large center sun pad. Some deck level storage lockers for ropes and what have you. You can see some drinks holders up there. This is your remote control spotlight. But it's a lovely place to sit here. We are cruising along. As you can see on the plotter here, we're doing just over 14 knots. Largest engine option in this boat that she's got fitted, so it does get up and go well. Around the 30 knot speed flat out. Uh, so we're going to leave it there for now and we will check back in once I've got tied up in port and we'll carry on and look around inside. So before we head back into port, just thought I'd give you a few different running angles on the boat. We've got a chance to see her on sea trial as well. So here we are just coming down the starboard side. You can see we're up on the plane here around 16 knots. It's a good speed for the drone, gives us a chance to see the boat from a few different shots, as we can see here, just coming round off the bow. Then we move on to a top down shot. Seeing the boat there up, very clean wake shot behind. So there is a four meter tender sat on the platform there. The previous owner took this onto their new boat, but it does show you what the platform will take if you so wish to carry something like this. New bimini frame up top there, the nice deep black color. So it might be an option over the top of that windscreen to wrap some satin black in there to match in with the domes. If you were to modernize the boat a bit like some of the latest ones. Now here we are, we've moved actually onto some running shots. We're just doing some tight, high speed turns with the surveyor at the helm, just testing the steering and the trim tab setup and what have you. I wasn't doing some audio on board at the time, but I just thought I'd overlay some narrative here to show you the boat in some carving turns. We're up at pretty much full speed here as the boat does some starboard and then off to port. Tight turns, a very nice wake shot there behind. Boat is quite sporty to drive considering she is a pretty good voluminous flybridge yacht. Okay, so let's continue our tour. So we're back in the saloon here, having tied up alongside in Antibes. Uh, giving you a quick scan around with the camera, you have to excuse there's a few bits of kit in here where we've been shooting, but we've got the saloon area in the aft. Here, this is an AV cupboard in the back left corner for the decoder and both surround systems. You can see the speakers up in the ceiling there and there's a TV lifter button here. You see that lifting up. Now here's the control panel for the ocean LED underwater lights that we talked about earlier. Just see the TV coming up there on its high-low bracket. Nice that that disappears into the deck there so it does give you that nice panoramic view when you wish so that's just coming up to full height there obviously a Samsung unit uh, lots of table lamps those obviously on the 240 volt side as well as all the lighting is 24 volt through the boat uh, no dimmers on this system but we could add those if you needed to the wood is a satin finish black American walnut to show you here pretty good actually there's a little bit of sun fade on the back here but for a boat of this age i have to say it's pretty pretty good um, ocean air wooden venetian blinds they contrast nicely so this is a cream cream leather on the sofas just scan around so you can see this side as well uh, upgraded carpet flip the mat over just to show you underneath that all looks pretty good I would say that's been replaced at some point in the past uh, coming forward so we go on to a solid wood floor here in the dining and galley area so we've got a formal dining space boats work really well for charter says so you can do that sort of formal black tie evening whilst you're on board easy for the servery if you're running with captain come hostess type setup 
obviously somewhere to take a coffee in the morning here with the walk up bar arrangement we've got a large fridge freezer household style and then down here we've got all the obligatory kitchen appliances dishwasher there's a whirlpool oven there four burner ceramic top and a granite finish here on the worktops there's a little extractor fan up in the middle there uh, we're on eu two pin sockets worth noting they can obviously be swapped out for uk three pins uh, if the boat was coming back she is an ex fat boat at the moment so she does have the ability to travel anywhere going forward with her next owner uh, we will be taking the boat as an actual completion in gibraltar so that will be the ideal collection point for anybody moving onwards into the med or the uk or perhaps further afield so we just come forward here we're in the lower bridge now so this is much the same as we saw upstairs earlier looks like we've had the autopilot controller here replaced at some point so we've got things like controls for the chillers for the aircon water pump it's got an upgraded ganache water pump 12 and 24 back volt battery chargers up here these are the man bonning engine displays that we saw up top um, and rather old Navtech system there it's been pretty much superseded now but it's still working um, you've got the again the e120 raymarine mfd engine displays up the top this is a burr walnut dash panel with a gloss finish on it that all looks pretty much up together over there again a vhf handset and your thrust thruster and throttle controls and what have you a side door here takes you out onto the starboard side deck as required and then we've got an electric helm chair here with all the uh, buttons here for the tilt and then the uh, the bolster adjustment as well with a little footrest no passenger seat on this particular one it's been changed out for a wine cooler seat handy if you're spending extended time on board as generally most of the driving on something like this is done from upstairs right so if we spin round let's go and have a look downstairs a few stats for you they're about 22.25 meters overall and 5.6 i think they're 5.65 5.67 in the beam uh, we carry 4,000 liters of diesel on board and as we mentioned earlier the accommodation here is split into four cabins so we're going to start forward this is the vip guest cabin so this is what i would call cabin number two on the boat just coming into here give you a feel for the space so we've got an offset slightly offset to the right double berth here a couple of storage drawers in the end little sofa over there on the port side high level locker cupboards either side underneath the deck and then we've got a good size wardrobe here plenty of full height hanging locker space in there aircon controls by the side of the bed and then on this side there is a little vanity set up there swing out stool and a tv up on the bulkhead all original materials i would say in here so this is a an alcatara style upholstery which we use on the ceilings and often on the bulkheads very very slight rippling here in the side panels but the roof linings are all pretty good tend to find as these warm up with the aircon system on they will tighten back up but just something to be aware of on her then we've got a, a ensuite heads compartment here so electric tecmo vacuum flush toilet system good size shower cubicles and a wash hand basin what have you uh, coming back through so we've got two cabins up on this level and then two down more towards the midships this is the bathroom for cabin number four on the boat so it is also doubled up as the day head you can see we've got a hair dryer over there and this is cabin number four so bunk bed cabin on the port side it does have a jack and jill door here that takes you through into that space and you've got an opening port light for the lower bunk and a little wardrobe tucked around behind you uh, up in the ceiling there is a little drop down tv but to be honest not much time spent in cabins like this but it is functional and gives you the ability to sleep eight 
So we do a return on ourselves, come down the stairs here towards the midships before we go into the master. This is cabin number three on the boat. So this is a twin berth arrangement running longitudinally fore and aft. Uh, we have tracks in the floor here, which allows this bed to slide across to give you an ad hoc double if you so wish. But we've got a center drawer there. There's a bit of storage under the bed. Just having a look, things like underneath the windows, can't see any evidence of leaks and what have you. Boat is all pretty much up together in that respect. We've got a TV on the bulkhead there. A wardrobe arrangement. And then an ensuite here running forward with a decent sized shower. Got some spa jets in that one. And then over on this side, the loo and hand basin and what have you. So really good size in here. And that takes us across just before we go in the master cabin, I'll show you the main electrics panel. So we've got the 240 volt systems down the bottom and then the 24 volt systems above. So really for an owner operator, this is the main focus on something of this size and it is a full beam master cabin. So as we come in here, we do have, as you can see, these giant hole windows, a little bit more restricted in light now that we've got boats either side of us here in the port but we have a slightly offset, it's so more of a 45 degree angle, the bed in here, which gives loads and loads of floor space. And it is a fantastic mini suite. So as we came in through the door there, you can see there's a nice little sideboard arrangement for some extra storage. We've got the TV up in the bulkhead facing the bed and then across here on what is the starboard side of the boat, left hand side of the cabin looking backwards, we have a desk come vanity station and um, there's AV set up throughout all of the cabins and obviously all of the aircon HVAC system good size wardrobes over this side as you can see all with illumination inside A very very slight tarnishing you can see on the edge of the mirrors here as is quite normal for things like this generally it's easier to repair the entire door section by taking off the glass and putting in a new piece rather than trying to uh, to do anything more complicated nice easy fix if it bothers you but for many owners they'll leave it as it is a couple of opening port lights you can see on the aft end and fore end of the main window with the two bonded center sections there hidden behind the door here is the ensuite find some light switches in here so you've got as with all the other bathrooms, very similar setup. Huge shower compartment there. Right, let's head back on up. Check out the engine room and the crew cabin. to put my shoes on. Uh, so other things to note, so we're carrying about 1200 litres of fresh water on board. The boat does have a water maker. I can't tell you at the moment whether it works, uh, but there is one on board, HRO unit. We've got two generators. So over here on the starboard side of the boat, you can see there's a 13 kVA generator and I'll add the hours in at the end of the description once I've had a chance to check all of this out. I'm over here up on the port side of the engine room. I have to excuse the chillers and what have you cutting out in here, so it's quite noisy at the moment. We've got all the various charging circuits and electrical panels and what have you. And then this is the main generator. So the boat actually is fitted with that second one as an option. So this is a 23 kilowatt, which will run the entire boat. The other generator really more as a nighttime unit. Just want to run the minimum aircon, what have you overnight. So we've got the aircon uh, chiller power pack down there. We'll just look outboard in here. We've got assorted valves for exhaust and what have you. Uh, we've got some rusty clips on here noted by the surveyor something to attend to 
in the not too distant future. And there's a little bit of cleaning and tidying up to do in here, but generally it's functioned nicely today on sea trials, met all the parameters that we expect running it up to full load. And you can see just scanning around the engines here, these all generally look to be in good shape. Uh, we serviced last, say last year, 2022, so it won't be too long and that will be due again. But as an overall impression in here, things look pretty good. So this is, say, your water maker system. It may need some uh, recommissioning. I'm not sure it does have the light on on there, but we haven't tried that as yet today. And then if we come back around here, access the crew cabin. So this is off the bathing platform, as you can see. We've just come down a couple of steps. That drops back, and then we've got teak steps to take us down into crew space. The owners have been using this as an owner-operator boat, so we've got all manner of cushions and general ship stores in here at the moment. So we haven't tidied this up for for the photos today, uh, purely as say is they're still clearing some kit off before the boat comes in to stock. But we do have a single bed here and then running fore and aft over the far side of the port back quarter of the boat, there is another single bed. So two, two beds and then in here, we have a washer dryer and then some cupboards above for laundry and what have you. Little window in the back end up there and then a sort of mini ensuite bathroom compartment. The platform itself is uh, hydraulic high-low, so that will launch and recover the tender. Very straightforward, that whole section there that the tender is currently sat on, dropping into the water as required. You can see, as we mentioned earlier about the teak being very thin I say starting really to show its age on here and that would massively improve the look of the boat if this was attended to at some point perhaps next winter as part of the maintenance works there are also some gel repairs to do if we just have a look around the back corners of the boat here little improvements to be made there just with some ad hoc work with one of the gel coat specialists when you've got a little bit of spare time. So if we just work our way forward here, we're coming up the starboard side deck. Obviously see the teak throughout on all of the deck surfaces. We've got a little bit of uh, gel coat crazing here, things like on top of the door mullions and on the windscreen here. This, this, is, this will all polish off, but there is a little bit of crazing in here and around the screen. This is pretty typical on boats of this age and that's not a structural issue, it's purely cosmetic. So. If it bothers you enough, generally heat damage from being out here in the warmer climate, that's grind out with a Dremel fresh gel coat. Or the other option be to fill and fare and put a wrap over it and then you can make the boat look like one of the new boats today that has coloured mullions. Uh, we've now put the bow cushions away, so captain's just pushing the boat back to bed. But you'll have seen those on the drone earlier when we ran her out. You can see here in on T port where we are and a typical mooring here for something of this sort of size. So that's it, we've covered off a good look round today. So lots of photos and video of the nitty gritty and other bits and pieces that we picked up today. Two options as we mentioned earlier in terms of how this boat is bought going forward, but it's an opportunity if you are looking for something like this to get in touch and uh, see if we can do something. Contact details as always, it's james at sunseekersouthampton.com or the mobile is plus four four seven seven four seven six eight six five eight seven. So we'll be down in Gibraltar for completion. I'm very happy to talk about doing a back-to-back -back deal that takes us straight on and away to a new destination with or without some assistance from us in any maintenance works going forward as you bring her back to life. Hope you've enjoyed looking around with us and check back soon for a little more on the channel.